this is a bit of a, if you've seen any of my other talks, you know, I, I tend to like to at least prepare a little bit with this stuff, but this is really absolutely, completely and utterly off the cuff. So um, I apologize in advance. Basically, I think this technology is really awesome, and um, I think that people who write web apps should be, it's especially self-hosted stuff, so um, if you write blogging software, or if you write um, issue trackers, or uh, I don't know, a conference scheduling software, or something like that, you should really kind of package it for a uh, sandstorm. So, um, most of you that know anything about DevOpsy kind of stuff uh, have heard of a thing called Docker. Some of you heard it as like the new goodness and, and sunshine and unicorns and that stuff. Um, and then you hear people that do traditional infrastructure stuff saying that it's all the safe and all that lot. Um, well, I'm here to say that uh, Sandstorm is basically Docker, but for just web apps. So it comes with all of the inherent bad stuff that people that do uh, systems administration uh, hate, but um, it, it's, it's, it's like Docker, so therefore it's, it's unicorns. Um, right. Basically, Sandstorm is a way of having um, very, very small packages that just comprise your um, web application. So it all, it's in, with Docker, you are supposed to just kind of run individual applications or individual threads or small processes, lots of small processes in lots of containers and the containers all join together. Sandstorm is based on C groups, which obviously is a, is a Linux uh, kernel thing, which means it needs to run on a 64-bit version of uh, Linux and it must be at least kernel version 3.14 or later. So if you're running Debian, anything prior to Jesse, it's not going to work. Uh, I can't remember what it is for Ubuntu um, because my VM machine at home doesn't uh, run Debian. Uh, but so, oh, oh, not my machine. Right. Um, no, no, it's fine. Hello. Um, so, um, Sandstorm basically has um, a, is, is a, you, you sign into it uh, using uh, GitHub or uh, Google Authentication. Uh, I'm going to use Google Authentication because, um, you know, why not? Um, which, of course, then means that I need to trust this machine that I've never used before. Um, why can't we just use Squirrel, damn it? Um, and essentially, like I said, this is all off the cuff and I'm not at all nervous. Um, essentially, uh, each of these applications that you spin up on here are referred to as grains. Now, uh, obviously they're taking the metaphor of um, sand, uh, quite literally. Um, so here is my sandstorm, stand, sandstorm server. Um, what you see here is the two presentations that I gave yesterday. They are each individual grains of um, an application called Hacker Slide. Um, but there's a load of other applications that you can get for it. Um, and if you go to the Sandstorm Marketplace, um, these are all applications you can download and install. Um, now, for example, a really key one for me uh, is EtherCalc. EtherCalc, if you've ever tried to stand up EtherCalc on um, anything, it's a pain. But Sandstorm, it's a one-click, install, it's there, click on that, create a spreadsheet, and what you see there, that kilobyte, is actually the memory that's being used on the server to stand this process up, 10k, to run Sandstorm, to run a Sandstorm app. So, if you used EtherCalc before, it's a bit like Etherpad, it's a collaborative document editor. Well, collaborative doesn't really mean much unless you actually share access to it. Um, I'm going to create a shareable link and just watch this not work. Uh, and I'm going to, uh, I have no idea how I'm actually going to share this because this isn't my laptop now. Um, okay, this is a bit annoying. Uh, okay. uh, Sorry? 
that is a good idea. A QR code. Uh, QR code generator. Uh, why don't they just include this in Sandstorm? That's a bug to submit. Um, so, as and when that actually comes up. Uh, if anyone here wants to the hell? <laughs> oh God, this is going horrifically wrong. <laughs> You'll have to trust me on this. Um, tinyurl. Tinyurl, that's another good idea. Tinyurl.com. Uh, ends with a long URL. Uh, oh, hang on. Oh, sand. Right, so if anyone wants to go to tinyurl.com slash sand. Uh, you will get to my un untitled EthiCalc spreadsheet, which I can rename to be OGCAMP Sandstorm Demo. Now, the nice thing about Sandstorm, I just realised this isn't, is this going up on the screen and I should be using the other microphone, or is it fine as it is? Okay, sorry about that. Hey, I can hear myself again. Um, right, so um, the nice thing about this, I see people clicking around, awesome. Hello, random people typing stuff on my machine at home. Um, so the awesome thing about this is that um, uh, effectively it's like Docker uh, in that um, I can blow this grain away just by clicking on delete and create a new one in a couple of seconds. Uh, I can go back to um, uh, the grains page and I can set up a new uh, sandstorm grain. Interestingly, some of, the, uh, some of the other apps you can get for Sandstorm, uh, Etherpad, Hacker CMS, GOGS, which is a, a Git, um, like GitHub repo. So you can basically stand up a GitHub project, a GitHub-like project inside Sandstorm and share it all over HTTP. Something slightly weird about Sandstorm is that they abstract everything away from the I.O. So all of your I.O. stuff comes through a layer called Captain Captain Proto, um, which is loosely derived from uh, a Google protocol called uh, ProtoBuff. And in fact, actually, Cap Captain Proto is written by a guy called Kenton Varda, who was working at Google developing ProtoBuff. So it's effectively, this is the extension of ProtoBuff into a web application world. Um, so I can spin up any of these applications, and they all get their own little grain of URL. Um, help, I'm stuck in a desert, awesome. Um, if I wanted to, uh, I could download this backup and transfer it to any other Sandstorm server. So um, I can take everything that's happened with this, any, anything that's stored in the database with one click. That's now downloaded. I can take that file and use this on, on any other machine uh, that's running uh, Sandstorm. Um, you can also create um, web keys. So for example, one of the applications that you can get is tiny, tiny RSS. So you can run your RSS feed reader on this and then use the web keys to run a mobile uh, native application and use the tiny, tiny RSS server without ever using your browser. It's kind of, you know, inception. Um, uh, I'm not really doing a very good job of selling this at the moment. I've just suddenly dried up a bit. But, um, okay. Rather than me making any more of a fool of myself at the moment, are there any questions about this stuff that I've kind of gone so far past kind of explain? Yes. Um, so the nice thing about this over Docker, for me, is that for me to start something up in Docker, uh, I have to have shell access. So on my restrictive work network, or when I go to a cafe or something uh, that only lets HTTP, HTTPS out, um, I can run this and just say, oh, I need to spin up a uh, Etherpad. And I'll spin up an Etherpad. Uh, and share it with the people I'm working with. And when we've, when we're done, destroy it. And I don't need shell access for that at all. Um, so it basically, 
uh, so at home, my VM server at home, I use uh, PHP VirtualBox to stand stuff up and tear it down again because then I don't need shell access. I don't need to RDP or VNC or uh, X forward or anything to that machine to start something up or run it. And again, I get the same with this. It's all native to the browser. You never have to go down to a command line. Yes? As a freak known as a Debian user rather than a sysadmin type person, how easy is this to set up? Um, so there's currently a conversation going on on the Sandstorm dev mailing list about whether they should actually do this as a DP as a package. Essentially, when you stand Docker, when you stand Docker, when you stand 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 Sandstorm up, um, when you stand stand it up. Um, you basically, so the, the new sort of way of doing installations seems to be a uh, curl URL pipe bash, and you kind of watch sysadmins sort of quiver. Um, the nice thing about Sandstorm, um, he says uh, sandstorm.io, um, is if we go to the self host on Linux thing, it says uh, you can do curl bash, blah, 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 blah. And then it says, for people as paranoid as we are, see the docs. And you click on that, and it says, you can do this. Every Sandstorm instance, every release that they make, they sign it with, they, they basically sign the four, the four or five of the developers will sign the package before they ship it. So if you want to download it, and, P and check the PGP signatures before you run it, you can do. Now, part of the reason why they're going through a conversation about it at the moment is that um, essentially Sandstorm runs as its own binary and it self-updates itself. So again, you never need to manage the application. So when they were talking on the privacy thing yesterday about no Debian user should, you know, nobody should be a, their own sysadmin, I really like Sandstorm for this because it manages itself for you. You just need to make sure the OS keeps running. So if somebody could figure out how to do the same thing with a, a you know, Raspberry Pi or something, I'd, oh, well, not x64. But if somebody could get this working on like a, a simple box that you put in the corner, it will just manage and upgrade itself and keep itself ticking over, which is, I think, kind of nice. Yes. So you're running on something.sprigs.ws at the moment? What physically is that? Is that something a service you've given a DNS alias or your own machine? Yeah, so um, this is running on my own machine. There is, uh, they do have a hosted version, which is oasis.sandstorm.io. Um, when you stand Sandstorm up, um, they've got their own dynamic DNS service. Um, so one of the uh, interesting wiggles about Sandstorm, um, so I, uh, for those that don't know, I work in IT security. Um, and so I have my own SSL certificates and all that sort of fun stuff. And one of the weird things that they do in Sandstorm is every grain has uh, effectively like a SHA-1 hash dot, sand, sand, dot your URL for your Sandstorm instance. But you never see it. But so as a result, your SSL certificate needs to be a wildcard dot Sandstorm dot da 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 which is a bit weird, but it's, it's done like that to separate out <sighs> every user, well, every application has a user that it, I'm not explaining this very well. Right, you stand up an application. I am a user on that application. If I share that application with a random person in the audience, they get a different URL that they go to. Every single person that goes to it gets a different URL, which means that there's no way that the different applications will ever cross origin, which is quite nice. Um, but in the same way, all the different applications have got their own URLs, which means the different applications never know about each other. So then there's some, I'm going to refer to it as witchcraft in the back end, that means that you can say in uh, a, th a feature of Sand, sandstorm called Powerbox, where you should be able to say this application 
can export images, for example, and this application can receive images. So you can link files together between them going through the sandstorm layer, which means that all the applications are completely segregated. Now, the reason why I went down that really weird tangent there is because the sandstorm guys understand this is a problem. So when you stand up, when you do this, uh, either spawn of the day devil pipe to bash thing or a uh, more paranoid version of spawn of the devil pipe to bash thing, um, one of the installation steps it says is, um, what URL do you want to use on our sandcats.io domain? And the reason why they do that is because they understand that you know people have dynamic DNS, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And the Sandstorm application will keep pinging sandcats.io to say, my IP address is this now. Um, but it also, they've got an arrangement with a certificate authority, and they will generate wildcard SSL certs for your name.sandcats.io for you in the application in the same way that Let's, Let's Encrypt does loosely, as far as I can tell, without really looking into the protocol. But so as a result, they are handling all the SSL encryption if you want to use a sandcats.io domain, but because I own sprig.js and it's awesome, because um, that's my name, just in case you hadn't guessed, um, I wanted to do it the really complicated way and I've got my own certificates and did that stuff. Right, so going back to the question about standing up Sandstorm, because I'm quite aware of the fact I'm doing a Ronnie Burke at the moment. Like, I'm surprised I'm not laughing at my own jokes yet. Um, uh, to stand up Sandstorm, you uh, pipe to bash, etc., and it goes, okay, uh, are you upgrading or installing? Installing. What username do you want to use? Or type none for none, none. Uh, what URL have you got? Uh, sandstorm.sprig.js. Uh, right, done. Uh, click on this link to create your, your admin account. And you click on that link and it says, which authentication system do you want? Google, GitHub, or we'll send you an email for every login. Uh, GitHub. Follow this instruction to create a GitHub uh, application. Click here, type this, copy this, paste this. Tell me when you've done it, okay. What did you get back of these two strings? Save. Click on login, it's logged in. Install an application, takes you to the application install page, done. It's really, 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 really stupidly straightforward as long as you understand the basic caveats around your hosting some really weird URLs. So don't ever expect to go through your own Nginx or stuff unless you're prepared to mangle it yourself. Any other questions? Uh, gentleman back there, and then I'll come to you afterwards. What's the, what's the about the process of having new uh, actually, writing applications. Okay, um, so they've made it quite straightforward. Uh, if you do any development of web applications using Vagrant, effectively, you have a Vagrant file called uh, Sandstorm, uh, no, Vagrant SPK, because their package files are called SPK files, which apparently conflicts with something else, but anyway. Uh, Vagrant SPK, uh, you stand up the Vagrant SPK, it says, put your files in here, run any post install scripts, and then run the uh, finalize script. Now, actually, I haven't done this yet. Um, I have been approached by them to put uh, some of the very badly coded applications that I've written into Sandstorm, to which my response was to laugh and then say, uh, you don't want my applications in Sandstorm, thank you very much, because I write rubbish code. Um, cue much laughing about um, Campfire Manager. Um, but yes, if, if I wrote an application that was actually any good, uh, I would be putting it into Sandstorm. Um, it just... <sighs> For anything self-hosted, it seems like the right way to be going because of how simple it is. Um, I wish they could make this so it would run on a Raspberry Pi so that you could take a Raspberry Pi card and on Software Freedom Day go out and say, have you got a Raspberry Pi? If not, go and buy one for 30 quid and this will run your blogging software for you. It'll ask you some questions when you turn it on. Okay, so does that answer your question? 
Um, I would strongly recommend if you do write web applications, you're interested in doing this, uh, go to the Vagrant developers list, uh, Vagrant, uh, the Sandstorm developers list. It's on sandstorm.io. Um, I know you've got a question of IO, that answered your question. Awesome. This gentleman down here, do you want to? Okay. Well, it's more of a comment. It's more of a comment than a question. Even if you haven't got a Raspberry Pi and you want to get a server, at the moment and frequently HP do like cash back offers so you can get a server for a hundred quid for home hosting. It's well worth doing it. I just got one and it's shiny. Awesome. So he's on commission. I'd get your referral code from him. <laughs> and if not, I have an Amazon. No, okay. Um, <laughs> right. <laughs> Um, so yeah, uh, that, uh, I just generally think Sandstorm's awesome, um, and and I want to tell people about it. So, um, right. Any other questions? Uh, yes. Um, they they recommend using SQLite, um, but uh, there is conversations on the list about running Postgres. Um, uh, given the size of most of the applications that I tend to write, I would say SQLite is probably going to be what I'd end up writing to anyway at the moment. But yeah, if you want to run MySQL, if you want to run a Java VM, you can run Java VM. In fact, um, one of the applications that they've got inside this is um, Apache Wave which used to be known as Google Wave, um, which is a monstrosity of a beast to install, and that stands up. Admittedly, the version that's in the App Store for Google Wave, uh, sorry, for Apache Wave doesn't work, and keeps saying, everything's shiny, Captain, which is their way of saying it's broken. Um, and I haven't yet got around to trying to work out what's wrong with it. Um, one of the, actually, that bring, one of the really nice things that I found about this is if you actually want to do some debugging uh, for something that's gone horribly wrong, is there's a link up there that says it's broken. And so you can now click on, well, not broken, but you can look at the debug logs. Uh, admittedly, that's, that's a big wall of text that, uh, yeah, I, I'm not reading that. Um, but if you, if you knew what your application was supposed to look like, or you wanted to get some troubleshooting stuff from to your developer, you can say, he can say, just click on this, copy, paste, and I'll do stuff with it. Awesome. Does that answer your question, which I kind of went around and... Uh, no, they want to have everything wrapped up in the, in the file um, because otherwise you can't have a one-click extract to transfer to another service. But, because uh, you're saying effectively, when you do that one click, not only do you get all your data, but you get the whole application as well. So you get a zip file that contains the application and the data and dunk. Next box. Okay. No worries. Uh, yes? Yeah. If if I really need SSH access, I have I have workarounds called C9.io. Uh, no, but uh, yeah, I use C9.io if I ever need a shell, and and I really need a shell in a hurry. Um, but that's not really what C9.io is for. So, uh, any other questions? No, right, okay, so, so this is Sandstorm. Uh, like I said, if you're a web app developer, use it, it is shiny and awesome. And also, I think it does provide unicorns as a service. Thank you very much. Is this the bit where I'm supposed to start doing dancing? No, okay.